to say I'm excited about being here in the number one destination sí. place for the diaspora. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm excited. And uh, the work we're doing is going to change history. It's going to make new history. Yeah. And I'm going to say that on your show right now. This program, Overcast University of Excellence, and everything that comes from it is going to rewrite history as we know it and establish new history for the other people to, to learn about, talk about, in years to come. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you for checking me out. My name is Eko Simpson. I'm a Ghanaian and I live in Ghana. Well, you are watching this channel because somebody introduced you to it. It was recommended or suggested to you on YouTube. Basically, my YouTube channel is to connect Africans and the motherland to Africans in the diaspora. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you for checking me out. My name is Eko Simpson. If this is your first time of watching my videos, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get more. I know you can read what is just beside me, right? Obokesi University of Excellence. Yes, uh, I am right here at the premises that will be used for the office of this university. So I'm going to have a conversation with Nanakra Kwamina II, the provost of this university. So hey, follow me and let's have a beautiful conversation with him about, you know, the vision, the partners and everything that has to do with this project right here in Cape Coast, Ghana. Okay, like I said in my introduction, I made mention that we are currently at the premises that is going to be used for the headquarters of the Obukesi University of Excellence. And I was going to talk to Nanakra Kwamina II, who is the provost of Obukesi University of Excellence. Thank you very much for joining me on my YouTube channel. Echo, thank you for having me. I'm I've been looking forward to this ever since our Zoom call or YouTube call m several months ago. So I'm happy to be here on the ground sitting next to you. And I couldn't be more excited about our conversation. All right, thank you. I mean, um, I was happy seeing you. or I'm still happy seeing you around, you know, Ghana, um, helping develop, you know, the little bit. Even, even though we are in Cape Coast, but whatever you're doing is to the development of Ghana. How do you feel? I mean, moving all the way from the state to Ghana and then being part of a project that is going to develop Ghana. I am extremely excited about being here. First acknowledge all of the, the chiefs, the queen mothers and people that have been of assistance to us. Uh, my chief in Atonkwa, Nana Kojo Aduakwa V, who installed me in 2004. Nana Kandua, the paramount chief of uh, Elmina, the traditional area. King Okatachi for his vision to set aside land for the Pan-African village. He set aside land for Obekesi University. Wakanda returned cities is in Asebu, so I'm very thankful for the people in Asebu. Uh, Nana Obekesi, uh, for sure. We've been working together on this for several months now. Uh, since I met him on February 3rd of this year, uh, 2020. And all of the other uh, chiefs in uh, uh, Sanahin, in uh, Asebu, uh, the Abusia Panin, and all the other chiefs that I've met, and I really appreciate them. And I, it, I'd be remiss if I didn't say I was very thankful for His Excellency uh, Kufuado's vision to declare 2019 as a year of return. The year of return is what set off the energy that we are now riding the wave of this energy of so many people that are coming from the diaspora to Ghana. Ghana has the reputation of being the number one gateway to new ideas, new concepts, new direction from Kwame Nkrumah to the liberation of the independence of all the African nations. And so here we are now coming around again full circle Ghana is still going to be number one I saw a program just yesterday listing the 10 most popular places to visit in uh, the African continent Ghana was number one on the list it's the number one destination for African Americans and others in the diaspora so Ghana is continuing to repeat and reinforce its uh, recognition and reputation as being the front runners in uh, all the things that happen. So uh, I say that to say I'm excited about being here in the number one destination place for the diaspora. And so I'm, I'm excited and uh, the work we're doing is going to change history.
Great. Now, talking about rewriting the history, uh, somebody watching us will say, um, I've seen my, my brother gladded in this beautiful outfit with this uh, gold cap and all that. Why are you in this? It means that you are in a certain position. In your statement, you made mention that 2004, you were installed as a chief. Yes. So, kindly tell my subscribers a little bit about you so that they will know who exactly is speaking to them. Okay, very good. Thank you. Well, I'm uh, in the U.S. I'm known as Dr. Qua David Whitaker, Esquire. I'm a, a Ph.D. graduate from Case Western Reserve University, which is a very prestigious university in Ohio. And my doctoral degree is in the area of educational psychology. I'm a lawyer by profession. My law degree is from Cleveland State University, also in Ohio, in Cleveland. And my practice, my legal practice was mostly in school-related cases. The most prominent cases were desegregation cases that said that the prevailing law in the United States from 19, I mean, eight, 1895 to 1955 was based on a Supreme Court decision that white people or the prevailing man majority population could discriminate against black people provided that the services or accommodations that were available were equal. They could be separate so long as they were equal. The only problem was that every separate facility or uh, service was unequal. So in 1955, the, the Supreme Court case of Brown versus the Board of Education said that the principle of separate but equal was no longer valid in education. And so I worked on cases in school law to dismantle the constitutional violation that kept schools separate. So most of my work has been in uh, school law. So uh, I've started and operated a charter school in Ohio. For, this is its 16th year. We're bringing that same school here as part of the Obekesi University of Excellence Learning Community Complex. So people think it's just a university, but it culminates with a university. We're going to start with KG1 okay. all the way through to university. Okay. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Uh, I was installed as Tufahin, which is the chief legal advisor to the chief of my village, Nana Kojo Duakwa V, in February 2004. So I'm dressed consistent with my title yeah. of uh, Tufahin in my village of Atonkwa. Yeah. So have you, have you had any, any comments from some of your mates, not the younger brother, but some of your mates, I mean, showing this happiness seeing you in this and then having this position what did they really say what did they talk about your position as a chief in Ghan? well it's uh i've been a chief now for 16 years wow. so <laughs> in 2004 people wanted to know what's going on what's happening what's wrong with you have you lost your mind you're talking about ghana instead of ohio you could be practicing law you could be doing this why are you going to ghana so many times but now it's 16 years later everybody knows exactly what i'm doing what i'm about and now people call me for consultation wow. how can i get to ghana uh, <laughs> can you help me get land can i buy a house is it what can i do there can you help me do this now i'm seen as a as a valued consultant as opposed to a, a lunatic or a maniac yeah. for wanting to leave the U.S. But the climate in the U.S. now has changed things too. With the culmination of uh, Donald Trump's presidency, the poor response that the uh, Western world has come up with to COVID-19 and the continuing brutality against uh, people of color, black people in particular, <coughs> There are a lot of people in the diaspora now, African Americans and others, that are taking a serious look at leaving the United States, going other places, and Ghana becomes their first thought. Uh, and some of them are people that I know, and they, Ghana is their first thought because they know me. <laughs> or they know other people from the U.S. that are in Ghana, and Ghana is seen as the best place to go to. So. I don't get too many questions now about do I live in trees when I go to Ghana, 
what do I eat in Ghana? People have passed that. So now it's more serious. Uh, how can I transition there? How can I earn a living there? How can I work at the university since they know you? They know I can do schools because I do that in the U.S. So now it's a more intelligent, more mature kind of question to me as opposed to 2004, 2005. There was silly questions about things. So we're, we're way past that. So now everybody knows that I'm serious. We're involved in serious things. And we are going to accomplish them too. So we we have a lot of allies now that we didn't have before. So it's 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 a bright day. Great, great, great. So 2004, 2005, uh, my father here was having some question, getting some question that was a little bit crazy in a way. But then after 16 years, there's been constructive questions about how to move to Ghana, start a business, get a land, and all that. So that means that. If we give ourselves a little bit time, others will understand better about Africa. Oh, yeah, and they will understand better mm -hmm. on their own over time, but they will understand better because we're going to teach them new things. Yeah. We're going to teach them how to think about their life in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of people that come here, and, and what's in their mind they don't know it consciously but what's subconscious in their mind is they want to come to Ghana and remake Ghana into New York City yeah. just to have a better weather yeah. or have a, ch a better, better, system better system running <coughs> but they want it to be like New York City so those people we have to retrain them yeah. to let them help them to understand that if you make Ghana into New York City it's just a matter of time before it becomes the same New York City that you left to come here so it's silly yeah. so they will learn faster because we're here to help them and the university will be a big big change agent because it's designed to help to create new people yeah. when I say new people I don't mean they look different yeah. but they think that different they analyze things different they come up with different s proposals for how to solve or do things so the result is different okay. and the people will be happier so with the with the training of with the training of I mean training people to change their mindset, let's come to the Bukesi University of Excellence. Uh, with your work as a as a lawyer looking at events that happens in schools. The Obukesi University of Excellence is actually about creating a learning community. And this is where I may get into trouble, but it's okay remaking a, a training people to think in terms of traditional African ways of viewing life. Because everything that is in Ghana now, everything that we see for the most part are holdovers from the British colonial period. The court system is British. The parliament is British. The school system is British. What's taught is designed to further your understanding of how Western people think about things. I personally believe that's an unhealthy way for an African person to say they're living. Because you're trying to become as much as possible like a person that's in Great Britain. I don't think that's healthy for an African person. Especially given the fact that, which people don't know history that, that well, but the colonial period and what we say is enslavement in the U.S. is a period of time about 400 years. So 400 years out of a history, an African history of 6,000 years is like the length of time of our discussion compared to your whole life. And you wouldn't leave this interview now, yeah. and the only thing you ever talk about for the rest of your life is the conversation that you and I had. Yeah. Because you have a much bigger life than that. Mm -hmm. You have a bigger history than this. So I can't become the central focus on a, of your life because of a conversation that we're having today. Yeah. But in a way, the African continent is structured still living in the colonial period trying to do colonialism better than the colonials did it. 
as opposed to do something different than that you did before the colonials ever arrived. Your history, your culture, your practices, your clothing, your rituals, your ceremonies, they were in place three or four thousand years before you ever saw the first white person. Before you ever saw that person, you had a thriving community, yeah. an intact society, all the infrastructure to make us a community and society work. And somehow or another, all the things that you knew, see, you've been retrained by colonialism to almost abandon everything you knew, and now we're doing the things that someone else taught us to do. So the purpose of Obakesi University is to make it clear to us that there are African ways of doing things that have a long history, much, much longer than colonialism, much, much longer than post-colonialism, and we should return, like Sankofa, yeah. we should go back and get everything that was valuable to us before we ever encountered any of these people, yeah. analyze it, see if it's valuable today. If it is, we should use it. It's like almost like if you had old food at your house that you didn't eat, and you left it out three weeks later, you wouldn't eat that food. You wouldn't go get that food to make it your meal. Yeah. You would say, well, this is spoiled. Yeah, One it. of the favorite Ghanaian words to me is spoiled. spoiled. <laughs> your car is broken. It's spoiled. It's spoiled. <laughs> so no one says, let's use the spoiled thing. Yeah. But in a sense, we're using the spoiled way to think about life. When we have ways that we already had, they worked fine. That's what made us so attractive because everything was so orderly when people came. They could see the sophistication of the people. So that's what the university is about, is to retrain us, instilling two basic ideas, too. Azozi is one. So that every person would develop an understanding and internalize the notion that Azozi says, you have duties, responsibilities, and obligations to yourself, your family, your community, your nation. And Ubuntu. Yeah. I am because we are. And because we are, yeah. therefore I am. Yeah. Those are the two main anchors for Obekesi University. Because if everybody was instilled with those concepts, we know that they will always behave in a way that says, what's my duty to you? Yeah. What's my responsibility to you? What's my obligation to you? And what's my obligation to myself? My responsibility to myself? My responsibility, my duty? What's my duty to him? What's my duty to these people? That if, whether I know them or not, they're all part of Ubuntu. Yeah. So I am because they are. So it's inescapable. So that's the main psychological, philosophical thing that we're trying to do. And we will use all of African history to assist us. We will use all of the practical things that's young people need to reinforce the ideas, but it's all centered around not creating a new African person, but introducing an African to an old African person. So with this introduction, um, somebody's watching, an elderly person, a younger brother, you know, who, who are the prospects who are supposed to come through this university like you said we starting from from the crutch from down there so at least everybody will, will get to learn something who are the prospects who are supposed to apply to go through this this education well we're a little we're still a little ways away from formal classes like people will be used to where you go to a place you sit down you're registered and you take classes as a professor or an instructor so we're a little ways from that we're developing the land now, developing the designs. But we have a two-pronged approach. The first is to establish digital material on our platform that anybody in the world could access it, learn from it, and grow. Uh, the other is, well, of course, we will be looking for students as young as five years old to go all the way through college. So anybody could apply, 
But the school, we have to understand, is mainly designed for the African person in mind. It's not that we would discriminate against other people, but if all things being equal and we have enough space for two people, <laughs> uh, enough space left for two people, one is African, one is Ghanaian, one is from Senegal or wherever. We know we're going to take Ghanaians first. We're going to take other African continentals second. And if we have space left, and when, then we'll keep going until we include anyone else. But they can always access the material online. So, but our emphasis, and we're not apologetic about it, our, our interest and emphasis will be in trying to produce a new African person that will protect the interests of those yet unborn and will protect the interests of those that they come in contact with every day and will move the African people forward. That's our main objective. So we're not going to be bashful about saying that uh, no matter who's asking, that's our main motivation. So, so we have a platform that will be available to anyone. We'll have, uh, eventually we'll have a brick and mortar school that you go to. Uh, we understand something else too. We understand that Africa is a continent of about 1.3 billion people. And half of those people are young people. Yeah. So our focus is on really trying to figure out how we can respond to develop the needs of young people because that is the next generation that will carry forward yeah. something. It's not people my age. Yeah. It's the young generation. We have to train them so that they think in Azotzi, they think in Ubuntu, they act that way. And then the interest of everybody is protected because everybody is looking out for everyone else. So it's mainly designed for them. So most of our thinking now is to centers around what do young Ghanaians need? We know that uh, based upon the insight of Akufuado, uh, he took the bold step to make high school affordable and open for everyone. Now, most things that you do have a, a upside and a downside. The upside of that is you have hundreds of thousands of new students in <laughs> high school. The downside is you don't have enough facilities to te teach them in. You don't have enough staff to teach them. But it's a, it's a short-term problem that will have a long-term solution. And we see Obekese University being one of the other universities that will need to come online in order to accommodate okay. students because you can't make a future in a highly technological environment with just a high school education. Mm -hmm. So we know you're going to have to have yeah. other places. So Oberkesey becomes one of those. We also anticipate that it will be so well received and will be so transformative that we will replicate Oberkesey University of Excellence in every one of the remaining 54 nations. That's our plan. That's our plan. We see it as small. <laughs> wow. I mean, the other 54 countries will probably have Obokesi University in there. Absolutely. If we have anything to do with it, they will. Because we, as soon as we show and demonstrate, and we will do it, that it works, it works well, students respond, and you see, we're going to have all the future leaders. All the future leaders are going to come out of this school because they will be the people that, if they run for parliament, yeah. they will be the people that the average person on the street knows will practice Azuzi. They know they will practice Ubuntu. So if you say our street, our roads need paved, they know this person is going to figure out how to pave that road. If we need things, they know the person that thinks like that mm -hmm. is going to act like that. Yeah. So that's what we intend to do. Beautiful. Now, uh, Obukese is, is, a, is, is a new project coming up. Definitely, you would need partnerships. Uh, I chanced on a, on, a, on a beautiful post made by Nana Obukese uh, about a partnership with Cape Coast um, Technical University. What part are they playing? What is Obukese also playing in this agreement? Uh, the Cape Coast Technical University is playing a big, big part in the development of Obukese University. Because every university in Ghana that's not government run or developed or sanctioned has to have a relationship with an existing university in order to become accredited. So 
we, Obercastle University of Excellence, we have great ideas, but the Ghana Board of Accreditation is not going to listen to me in a conversation and say, well, we'll, we'll accredit your university. Yeah. So the process that they have established is that a, a new university has to affiliate with an existing accredited university. So we have the uh, honor and privilege and uh, the pleasure of developing a partnership relationship with CCTU to do two things. One, help guide us towards the accreditation process, which is very, very important. You can't function if you don't have this. So that's one aspect of what we're working with them on. The second, uh, they will be able to support some of our courses that we're developing in the area of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and agriculture. So they teach in the area of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, but they don't teach in agriculture. But there is a program, an agricultural program, that they are partnering with Obekesi University to implement using a portion of the university land. So that's a secondary relationship we have that we think will be very fruitful. It helps us in the sense that it allows us to begin to make the land productive. It helps them because they have a, a willing partner to work with to develop this agricultural program, which is part of what we do, but it's not part of what the university does. So it helps us to go find another university, for example, say Clark Atlanta University or Florida A&M. Florida A&M does have an agricultural program, and we can say to Florida A&M, who we're also talking to, that we have a relationship with Cape Coast Technical University. We have a demonstration project in agriculture. Now, if you would become an affiliate partner of ours in your agriculture, now we have Ubuntu. Yes. Now we have this yeah. thing happening. Yeah. So we're talking to them. So without CCTU's support, we wouldn't be able to have this conversation. Yeah. So that's another way they're helping. But we're also collaborating on developing ideas about how to meet the needs of young s students that they may have at the university, ways that we can help. How can we bring students to this agricultural pilot program? How can we creatively come together and use our ideas and their resources and our resources to reach out and uh, find out how, how young people will be aided. One idea we're working on that I think is very, very attractive and I think is very, very timely. Uh, we have a youthpreneurship program. Uh, I've mentioned that almost every young person I see, whether it's in traffic it's at a junction, yeah. it's on the roadside. There are thousands of entrepreneurs walking around every day yeah. that don't know that they're entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like you're an entrepreneur, yeah. and you know you're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But there's a person selling coconut, or selling bananas, or selling uh, uh, pineapple. They don't see themselves as an entrepreneur. So we're gonna develop a program that provides certification okay. and knowledge. So you, so every person out there that's already behaving as an entrepreneur will come to understand what they're doing on another level so that they may come to the conclusion that rather than six of us selling coconut 10 yards away from each other, we could perhaps come together and have one bigger business yeah. that we could alternate manning it during the day mm -hmm. and the other five of us could be doing other things yeah. to further the development. So these are ideas that we think will come to young people if they got a certification in pre-entrepreneurship. Uh, uh, then you got a, 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 a more robust certification. Yeah. Yeah, entrepreneurship two, yeah. entrepreneurship three. Mm -hmm. yeah, everybody has a business plan because you're in business. Mm -hmm. So you can have a business plan yeah. You can name your business, like they have names on, on things that you already named your business. But now you can start thinking about this as a business person, not necessarily as a person that's handling consignment for someone else. Yeah. They have the business plan, 
you're their employee, but you're engaged in entrepreneurship too. So we want to make the young people aware that you're already an entrepreneur. You could develop that better and you could be more prosperous. Beautiful. I like, I like the fact that Obukesi University is also looking at, you know, training the layman working down there who doesn't know that, I mean, he or she can upgrade into whatever he or she is doing. Right. And I love the fact, I mean, uh, talking about that man working over there who sells coconut doesn't know that when he or she can partner with other people to expand their business.